Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of a T10 map demonstration with the uh, Blight Death's Oath character that I'm currently playing. Uh, I'll go over my links and everything after this map. Uh, here's just a pretty standard map. Magic mobs, physical damage reduction, extra damage as fire. Um, it is less effective curses and we're using vulnerability and temp chain so it'll hurt us a little bit but nothing too crazy. Um, Standard tree if you guys want to see what it looks like. We're playing with Mind Over Matter, so we've got 6k effective life. Uh, and we are level 80 in a 77 map. So here we go, boys. Actually, hold on. This is not the right links. Is that name? Why is name here? Oh, why was named there? That's a bit awkward. Oh, I mean, I know you can spawn from bloodlines. That's just... That just feels bad, man, dude. That's like... That's spooky. You know that was scary, cause uh... Oh. So there you go, there's the, the one downside I have with this build right now is on the slight case that you get chonked really bad. My gear is not like super good. Uh, I actually have no mana regen rolled anywhere on my gear. Which means that um, if I do actually drop to like no mana, I can't actually Warcry unless I socket it to blood magic. But uh, it doesn't happen too often. There's so much CB in here. Alright, so boss is in. I'm just going to swap Ink AoE with Swift Affliction for the Blight. Feels no movement speed, man. There we go. All right, so that's pretty much the character. Uh, not the best map clear. It's okay. It's just kind of something a little bit different. So I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the character and kind of like the gear I'm using and whatnot. So. Here's the passive tree currently. I'm sitting on 5.1k life. I have like the whole Scion life rule to pick up along with like adjacent life over here. Uh, and we can respec these two nodes and just connect here to get a jewel. That'd be for like level 82. We take almost no extra damage from crits or actually I don't even know, I'm not doing the math on this, but you get indomitable for 20% reduced extra damage from crit along with Belt of the Deceiver, which gives us 30% reduced extra damage from crit, which is pretty cool. Of course, you don't have to use those if you don't want to. Um, Death's Oath only does 450 flat uh, damage per second, and that's very easily mitigatable. I only have 24 cast res, and you can see from that map clear that everything is pretty much fine. It does basically counteract my mana regen. I only have 100 though, so it's not like it's too crazy. And I could very easily get additional mono regen if I just had like one mono regen piece of gear. 
uh, somewhere here. These aren't even like essence crafted with chaos, it's nothing fancy, just standard life and resistance. So in terms of uh, going over the gear, I'd recommend Breath of the Council as your weapon. Since you are playing a Berserker, you don't really get much cast speed on the left side of the tree, so it's important to scale skill effect duration, because skill effect duration will increase the duration of each individual blight stack, which is basically, it's kind of like the reverse faster casting. Instead of building up your stacks instantly, um, you just take a bit longer to ramp up and it takes a bit longer for them, for them to fall off. So it's an alternative to stacking cast speed, which actually scales very well. I also makes it so your Abyssal Cry will, I mean, my Abyssal Cry lasts 19.5 seconds, so, I mean, if that's on a target, they're fucking, they've got Abyssal Cry on them, trust me. <laughs> so, I also recommend Unshattered Will, it's a very good shield, it's not even that expensive, it gives a great life roll, all resistance is very good, block chance, mana gain on block is okay, and huge damage to channeling abilities such as Blight. Uh, I've got a standard, just life armor helmet. Death's Oath, um, we'll cover this one as the last piece. I've got Alepathy Gloves, which give us a 5 link with a level 22 Blight, and I went a little bit out of my way to actually vol a couple of them to get a White Socket. The reason why I wanted a White Socket is because I can replace Ink AoE with Swift Affliction, which is basically like a Conk and Ink AoE swapping, um, and it reduces the duration of Blight, but that's okay because we have so much Chaos Skill effect duration anyway. And then boots are pretty standard, just life and res. So, let's talk about Death's Oath, and then I'm going to go over the links really fast. Death's Oath is a really interesting chess piece because it does the chaos damage over time, gives you attack speed, gives you a ton of all attributes. Uh, attack damage leeches life is useless for us, unfortunately, but it gives a bunch of really fun stuff. The other thing about it is you don't actually need to socket, or sorry, you don't need to link anything onto it because it grants you a level 20 death aura. Same thing with Blight, you don't actually need to link these up. So the Death Aura is located here on the left hand side of the screen and is scaled through a bunch of different modifiers. I put out a YouTube video explaining this before. Uh, if you guys are curious, feel free to check it out. And this doesn't actually have a visual. You can like see this visual on it down here, uh, but it doesn't have, oh whoopsies. It does not have an actual visual um, on monster. Well, it doesn't have like an aura display. You can see it on monsters, but it's like an invisible circle around you basically. So, the links you want to use with Death's Oath or the gems is Void Manipulation, Less Duration, Swift Affliction, Efficacy, and Arcane Surge. If you do not use Arcane Surge, you cannot use any duration-based support gems as you can see right here. This adds the hidden tag for duration for it. The last option where this red socket is is ideally you'd want a blue and you could use Ink AoE and or Conk Effect here. So for the gloves, I've got Void Manipulation, Controlled Destruction, Ink AoE, and Efficacy, and you swap this in with uh, Swift Affliction, which you don't really need until like you're running your higher tier maps, to be honest. Uh, boots, I've got Clarity, Fortify, Shield, Charge, Faster Attacks. Unshattered Will has Wither, Spell, Totem, Faster Casting. Helmet has Temporal Chains, Blasphemy, with Summon Stone Golem, Increased Duration. Ideally, you should just drop your Golem and use Vol Grace here. Vol Grace will have such a crazy duration, you already have the Dexterity to run like your Void Manip and your Swift Affliction, so Death, or sorry, your um, your uh, Vol Grace will be like absolutely insane for this character. In the weapon, we've got Ink AOE, Abyssal Cry, Onslaught Support. Uh, one of my viewers actually gave me the idea for this for Onslaught Support, which is pretty cool because your Abyssal Cry is always going to do like the last hit because when they when they die, Abyssal Cry explodes. So this gives you permanent onslaught with the exception of bosses because there's no adds unless you actually do find adds. So if you don't want to use the onslaught support, you can just go ahead and use like void manipulation here instead. So with when it comes to coloring your death's oath, there's a couple like a couple methods you can do. You have one method where basically you just chrome the shit out of it and hope you get lucky. Um, that's kind of what I did here, and I got four off colors, which works for me. You can also go over to Verici and you can try to do, you might want to just basically go to Google and type in like Verici calculator. Um, you can do like one blue or one green here as well, which isn't a bad option. And the last option I put a tutorial out for on my YouTube channel earlier, uh, which is basically using the jeweler method. And the process or explanation of the jeweler method is quite simple. So I'm just gonna go and use something as an example here. Uh, let's go ahead and take this glorious plate right here. So Glorious Plate favors red. It is a red gem, or a red piece of gear. Um, you can see it requires 191 strength, so it's really unlikely for it to roll anything else other than red. 
So what we're gonna go ahead and do is chrome it and we're gonna get a green. So say I want my next color to be, I don't know, let's say blue, right? Let's say we want something other than red. We would go to Verici, sorry, Verici's here, and we would do two sockets and that's red. So we reroll back to, actually, sorry, two sockets is the minimum, I'm stupid. Um, what I would do in this instance here is you do uh, Verici, where is it? Let's do one green and one blue on this. So now say you want a blue or green as your third socket, you would click this and you just keep going back and forth like this until you get lucky. You can do it. You can do it. It's a very tedious method, but it does work. Um, and this is cool because you can confirm the colors that you want, whereas chroming, it's totally RNG. Um, and then for four socket, you would do the same thing. And then for five socket, you would do the same thing. And for six socket, you wanna leave that last red so that when you hit the six socket, it will favor red because Death's Oath requires 180 strength. Um, if you hit a fucking blue or a green, you kinda get fucked and you wasted 350 jewelers, but that's basically just life. Um, you don't have to worry about a six link or even a five link with this build. So this is pretty much where the currency is actually going to go. Um, one last thing, I don't think I went over my belt, so I'm using Belt of Deceiver just because, uh, actually I went over it a little bit, it gives Intimidation, and Intimidation increases the damage that targets take, it's a multiplier, and Wither Totem is also a multiplier to Chaos damage, and then Vulnerability is basically a multiplier because it's your curse. So you've got a really cool, um, I guess a bunch of buffs that kind of all add in together when you're dealing your damage. The last thing is we have Unshattered Will, which is you cannot be stunned or have elemental ailments affect you. And I think you even get, is it reduced elemental damage taken? I don't remember exactly uh, from this Harbinger, but he's pretty cool because we don't actually have Unwavering Stance. Um, and I haven't really noticed anything stun locking me because we slow everything by a crazy amount. But uh, this guy is pretty good, man. I like this little Harbinger buddy a lot. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for you guys. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, the last thing I really have to add in is the jewels I'm using is um, two spreading rots, which basically just increase the damage of everything overall. Uh, you can see it here. This is also part of the hindered duration we were talking about before, I believe. Um, so two spreading rots make a huge difference, which is really cool because you basically just tap once. Uh, and then everything dies like all whites even blues will just die on like one tap So anyway, like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time if you did Please feel free to like share and subscribe and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Have a wonderful time boys